I don't think there's anything I can add to the commentary and critiques of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny that hasn't already been said in many reviews of the film across YouTube. The film was precisely what I thought it was going to be. It was an underwhelming, saddening, depressing, boring, truly unnecessary film and a complete disservice to a much beloved character. As was expected from the leaks, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character of Helena Shaw does indeed lead the plot, by and large, upstaging Indy, acting as a stereotypical, unlikable, self-absorbed Mary Sue, and she makes the big, pivotal decision at the end to punch him in the face in order to knock him unconscious and send him back to the future, rather than allow him to wallow in self-pity and die in the past. The film's opening 20 minutes are the highlight, with a genuine feeling of an actual Indiana Jones film, set during the Second World War. The de-aging on Harrison Ford is decent in some scenes, but in other scenes I found it a little bit too video gamey and distracting. But if they'd been able to produce a two-hour film in this manner, a complete prequel with a young de-aged Indiana Jones, I think they could have had something here. This could have been a decent film if it was just a straight prequel. Although, to be fair, the CGI would probably have been prohibitively expensive. Instead, what we ended up with is an Indiana Jones film no one wanted. I mean, who wants to see the character elderly slogging through another adventure in his final days? Let alone one that has been turned into a defeated, unhappy, lonely, divorced old man who no longer feels he has a place in the world whose son has suffered the ultimate indignity of being killed off-screen. And the fact that Indy must endure the further insult of being a glorified passenger in his final outing just makes things worse. I cannot explain to you how unlikable and unpleasant Helena Shaw is in this movie. How did you end up like this? Flaming, resourceful, daring, beautiful, self-sufficient! And it's really astounding how the filmmakers thought fans would warm to this character. <laughs> Maybe they didn't. But I think when it comes to the likes of Disney, the political messaging and feminist activism in this case comes first. Not quality of writing, character or story. First and foremost, smash that patriarchy and install a girl boss to make it her story. The story is a rather silly quest for a MacGuffin that's basically a time machine. The Dial of Destiny created by Archimedes in 213 BC or so. It can locate fissures in time. The main Nazi bad guy of Jürgen Voller wants to get his hands on it to go back in time and fix Hitler's mistakes. But he didn't account for continental drift in his calculations when using the dial. And it sends them back to the siege of Syracuse. If only he'd known that at the beginning of the film. We could have avoided basically the entire conflict in the story. And we could have been spared this entire humiliation of the character of Indiana Jones. But while I was watching the film, I couldn't help but think that the more Disney produces woke films like this that fail at the box office, the more the average cinema-going audience member must be thinking, why and how are they still making films like this? Films that cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make that can't recoup their costs. Films that undermine and sully the legacy of a franchise and that fans, for the most part, don't really enjoy. And it's here, surely, eventually, that many of them might begin to wake up to the reality that cinema tickets are not the only thing funding many big-budget Hollywood productions these days. A major motion picture is marketed at the public in trailers and other promotional materials, and it's designed to appeal to a particular type of audience. And if people like what they see in the advertising, they pay money, and they go to the cinema and they watch it. But they have to now consider that there's been box office failure after box office failure, and it's been happening because the films are lacking the quality they once had, and that's partially to do with the fact that the scripts are being compromised in a particular fashion due to an ideological or political bias being injected into them. And it's adversely affecting the creative quality of the production. It's driving audiences away. They pay money to see an Indiana Jones film. And they expect to see 
Indiana Jones being heroic and center stage and not being upstaged at every turn or reduced to a cowardly, defeated, hopeless shadow of his former self who no longer feels like he has anything to live for by the end. When did anyone want to see that? Until he's punched in the face and dragged back to the future against his will by a smug, self-absorbed Mary Sue who steals his thunder throughout the film. Ultimately, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny makes for a forgettable ending for the indie franchise, to say the least. But the good news is, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull looks like a masterpiece by comparison. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. The Dave Cullen Show is made possible by you, my generous subscribers. If you'd like to support my work, head on over to my subscribe star linked below in the description box. And for a pledge of as little as $1 per month, you can help to keep the show going. I'm also doing one-to-one -one monthly subscriber chats. Thanks again. Take care.